Hi everybody, my name is Orsina Amsler and uh, some of you found my student work website at www.amslerartroom.wordpress.com and uh, I've had some requests on how to make an explosion book, also called a squash book. Um, and this is something I do with my seventh grade students and I'm going to show you how to make one. Um, you untie the book like this, it's a square book, and then when you open it up, it sort of explodes into this series of um, square and triangular pages. And some people call it a squash book because it sort of squashes shut like that and then you can tie it shut with a ribbon. There are tutorials on how to do this on YouTube. Mine is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to show you how to do it as though you are teaching another group of students. Um, so a lot of the tutorials are geared towards just one person making one book. I'm going to show you how you can convey this seemingly complicated product uh, to a group of middle schoolers easily. Okay, so you're going to need, we'll show you these other samples later, um, to make your explosion book, and I always recommend you do one yourself first before you try it with students. You'll need a glue stick, a length of ribbon about 20 to 24 inches, two pieces of four and a half by four and a half chipboard, gray chipboard, two matching pieces of origami paper that just need to be a little bit bigger than your chipboard, and three pieces of black paper that are um, eight inch squares. You can use any color, I prefer black. Um, so that's what you need to start and we're going to now begin. So the first thing we're gonna do is make our covers. Now on this book here, um, I used an orange solid paper, well the student used an orange solid paper. And uh, as you can see, the covers give it the rigidity to hold the book together. So this is where we use our chipboard and our um, origami paper and you'll need your glue stick, and I always recommend having some scrap paper handy because you don't want to get glue all over your tables. I always scour my uh, teacher copy room and collect rejects and old handouts that teachers don't want anymore for that purpose. Okay, so you're gonna lay a piece of origami paper pattern side down, and then you're gonna put one of your cardboard squares centered in the middle. Use the glue stick. Good old fashioned glue stick works fine. Some of the tutorials have you use, you know, fancy bookmakers glue or quick dry glue, but I think a glue stick works great for students and it's economical. Um, this is a great brand. I recommend the Prang glue sticks. Okay, glue the whole surface of the cardboard, flip it and stick it down and you will be left with um, about half an inch all the way around and just kind of try to center it. You can flip it and smooth it like this. Now again, some of the other tutorials have you do some fancy trimming of the paper. I make it very simple. I tell my students it's like wrapping a present. So first thing I'm going to do is put glue on two of the strips. Oops. This is why it's good to have scrap paper. Um, and I'm going to take those glued edges and wrap them real snugly around the edge of the cardboard. And I'll kind of use my fingers to pull it tightly because you don't want any air bubbles or gaps between the paper and the cardboard and just give that a nice little crease down like that. So two sides are wrapped around and then the reason why I say it's like a present is because this next part we're going to fold these corners in and I'll give you a little close up here in a second so you can see how I kind of folded that corner in at a right angle like a present. Okay, and then you put a little glue on those corners and you redo it to make it stick like that. And then you glue that remaining flap and you pull that over. Now you're dealing with kind of more layers of paper at this point, so your thumbs are nice to get that to stick. And the reason why we make those corners is because it gives you this nice diagonal um, and that will be visible when you assemble your, your book later. You'll see, you want to kind of see a neat crease there. And same thing on the other sides. So this is the first thing I'll have the students do. We actually do this book assembly in a single class. So they have one cover, they'll do their second cover, which I've already prepared for you, 
and then I'll have them put them inside to inside like that and then I have on hand some old textbooks that I inherited from the math department I'll have the kids stack these up on the table and let them sit under a heavy book for a few minutes so we're gonna do that off camera and those are your covers okay so now we're going to use our three eight inch squares of black paper and these three pieces of paper are going to become this page unit okay this is the inside of your book I'm gonna show you a fold you'll do the same fold on all three pieces and then these three pieces will get assembled together all right so we're gonna start with one first thing you do is you fold it in half this way to make a rectangle it's really important that the kids make what I call crisp creases all the way to the edges but you don't need a bone folder or anything just use your fingers okay now some of the tutorials will tell you to then fold this back and reverse it along the same fold I'm telling you don't do that instead so we're gonna open this up and we're gonna turn it and make a second fold the same way so we have this kind of V shape right here so our next fold is going to be a rectangle in the opposite direction but the same way so both folds are going that way if that makes sense okay so you see kind of this plus sign going on here um, now the last thing I tell the kids the final fold is going to be a diagonal fold now you can position this paper two ways this is what I call the valley position because the papers are sloped like a valley or you can put it in what I call the mountain position which is called the mountain position because it has a peak so it's very important that this final fold is done when the paper is in the mountain position so last fold is corner so we got a mountain position corner to corner so now it's a triangle okay now from here I'm going to go back on this fold and watch what watch what happens it's gonna kind of pop into place and I can squash this down so this is a little unit right here okay do this again It pops down like that and you can see how it squashes into this unit last one okay all right so we have now created these three little individual units now some of the other tutorials when you have they've had you fold back on all the lines so you end up with this piece that's flat and their assembly often requires you to layer these three pieces together, which if you've never made one of these, it's difficult to envision how it's all gonna get folded apart, which is why I prefer this method. And that's why I told you to not fold in both directions, but to make each crease distinctive. Okay, so this is the little story that I tell my students to get them to understand how this book works. So you wanna look at each of these as a little bird. Peep, peep, peep. Okay, it's a little beak. Little wings, little beak. Now we don't want the bird laying on its side because that would be sad, he's sick. We want him perked up, perched up on his little feet. Okay, so one bird, two birds, three birds. Now I tell the kids to line up their little birds so they're facing them, the student. So you, camera, you are the student and you have your three little birds lined up. Then I tell them a little story. I say, okay, pretend that you're a mother bird and you're flying to your nest. So here comes the mother bird and here are her three hungry little baby birds. And as the mother bird, you have one worm and you have to give it to one of your babies. So you just go to the one in the middle cause he's, you know, the closest. So you give that little baby bird a worm. And then because he's no longer hungry, he turns away. Two birds are still left hungry one bird is happy. So when they have their pieces in this position, I say, do you know why I told you this silly story? And then they can start to see what's gonna happen. Cause what is gonna happen is the wing of our little bird that got the worm is gonna go over the wing of his brother or sister over here. And his other wing is gonna slide over that wing. And that, when glued together, becomes this. 
okay? I'm gonna just show you how to glue it together and then you will see how this compacts into our little squash book. So let's get our little birds back. Hungry birds, not hungry bird. You are basically aligning these squares. So this bird can get opened up a little bit and we're going to put the glue on that inside square or wing, whatever you wanna call it. And then we just position this over it, making sure that the squares are lined up like that. But what's great about this method is your folds are already determined. So the kids really will, your students will have a good understanding of how this is already, you know, becoming something that's they can they can envision. Oh, cuckoo clock's going off. And then same thing, you'll put some glue here and you'll slide this other wing over it. And then when that's all assembled, you have your your unit, which as I showed you is here. So three squares become one collapsible page unit. Now we're ready for our final assembly. So we retrieve our little covers which have been pressing and drying flat under our heavy book. We have our page unit, our baby birds assembled into a page unit, and we're going to need our ribbon. So find the midpoint of your ribbon by bringing the ends together and pulling it tight. And here's the midpoint. And tape this midpoint across the inside of one of your covers. And this is just a way to hold it in place as we do our final assembly. So I tell the kids, think of it like making a sandwich. Bread, bread, and this goes in the middle. As you can see, we're going to have approximately a quarter inch all around. Um, if you followed my requirements of size, and you can do these in different sizes, you just have to kind of figure out the proportions and adjust it. So again, this was four and a half inches. This was an eight inch square, which folded down gives us a little page unit that's four by four. So that's why we have that quarter inch around the edge. Okay, so I always tell the kids, where do you put the glue? Always on the smallest thing. We don't wanna put glue on the cover and then have exposed glue when we put the smaller piece on. So they take their page stack, which is closed, and they generously apply the glue to one surface. And I do tell them here to be careful not to get like down the sides of your page stack because you might, if you have any exposed edges that you haven't been super precise about, you don't wanna glue the book shut before you even get it finished. So I got some straight glue there. Then I'm gonna flip this and center it right there in the middle. Give it a good press, okay? Again, nicely centered. Now, I tell the kids the best way to make this book look great is not to be concerned that this is exactly placed here, but to make sure this cover gets lined up with the other cover, okay? So we will now put glue on the remaining surface of my little page stack and get that lined up like that. And with a good quality glue stick, you can open this up right away. Check for glue smears, um, which I do see here a little bit. And then once you feel like it's looking pretty clean and it opens and closes nicely, put it back under your textbook. On my website, www.anslerartroom.wordpress.com, um, my explosion book lesson there was um, the inside pages were then a series of squares and rectangles that the kids cut out of a large abstract painting they did. I'm gonna talk about that more in a second. But you really can do anything inside. So this um, was patterned papers as well as some photocopies of collage, magazine collages that have been touched up with color pencil. Um, this is another one of that same lesson, so it's a combination of patterned papers and uh, Xeroxes of student collage work. But let me talk to you a little bit about this lesson. Okay, so the kids, I spend four days doing a big abstract painting. And we do collage, we use 
I kind of limit them to certain color schemes. Um, we practice different mark making. We then outline some forms in Sharpie. We do some splatter paint. So they're given, you know, they end up with this really colorful, bright painting. And they don't know what they're doing yet. I have not yet shown them the book. So as far as they know, they're just making this fun abstract painting. And then I show them the book and they're like, whoa, this is so cool. So then what they do is on the back of their painting, um, I give them a template, which is, can't find it. Anyway, as you can see, I cut a square that co coincides with how big their inside pages need to be. And what they do is they just sort of find interesting parts of their painting and they trace a square on the back side so that they can then cut it out. They need a total of 11 squares and six of those are going to be divided into triangles by a line like this. So this just sort of gives you a sense. And the reason why you need 11 squares is because one square is on the cover and one, two, three, four squares stay squares on the inside, so that's five. And then the remaining six become halved into triangles on the folds there. So that's why you need 11 squares. So when you cut them up, you got these beautiful pieces. And some are triangles and some are squares. And then those get glued into the black pages of your book. If you wanna be super fancy, I make little templates like this, which um, this represents Let's get our book out that's been drying here. So this little template here represents um, what the book looks like in its open form. So they can take their pieces and kind of play around with positioning before they, you know, commit to how it's going to be arranged inside. But your variations will be wonderful. But that's basically how to make an explosion book as a raw form. And uh, let me know if you have success with your students. Thanks for watching.